Hello everyone, this is General Hagerney. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Russian Federation faction in the game Global War 2025 Meltdown. So that's the brown guys that we're looking at there. Let's just move this back a little bit. You can see in the Baltic Sea there, they've got some boats and a helicopter in there. They've got lots of units to begin this game with. They're actually pretty powerful in this game. So we, as we go across there, you can see there's even more that they have down there. And over here, they've got a little thing going on down in Central America as well. They've got a frigate down there and um, they've got uh, four infantry units down there. And they got a couple of, a couple of attack submarines here. And they've got some ships out over here. So they've actually got quite a bit of stuff going on here. Uh, this one here, I'm waiting for my chip in the mail. Uh, that should be ICBM. So there should be two ICBMs there. Uh, one of my chips got missing there. So um, there we go. Um, so let's just go and take a look at the dashboard. Taking a look at the dashboard for the Russian Federation, we can see that uh, they have 24 IPPs to spend to begin the game, but I think that that'll go up right like uh, by, the, by the end of the first turn because um, they have a lot of units and there's a lot of territory up there that NATO has that, uh, that Russia could probably take. They'll probably take at least two, maybe even three uh, territories, right? So the, their money is going to go up by the time they collect for the first time. Uh, but they start with that 24. Um, they have four cyber warfare um, points. So that's, you know, like, that's not great. The other, uh, some of them have five and, and uh, only the, um, the Pacific Coalition has less than that. But, you know, so four is better than nothing, right? <laughs> it's still pretty good. So their special ability is, is called Endure. So each Russian land zone that is captured has a, a damage marker placed on its green factory number. Um, the capturing player can pay five IPP to remove this marker during their end of turn attack. So let me just show you what that is here. Um, let's go up to one of the Russian territories there. And we look, uh, so here's one here. There's the green factory marker right there. It's uh, two, right? Like the, the red number is how much the territory is worth. Um, and it also represents how many infantry units you can place there. But the green one is kind of like, um, is, is like a factory in, in 36, right? So you could place two other units in that territory. You know, like it could be a mean battle tank or um, um, helicopters or fighters or whatever, right? Anything that you can buy, uh, you can place in there. Um, and in this space, it's up to two things. So what'll happen, so if the, if NATO were to take this territory, then NATO doesn't get to use that factory production unless they repair that, um, that green gear looking thing there uh, for five IPP. So that's the Russia, Russian special ability. It's kind of like the scorched earth thing in, in uh, in 36, right? Um, so what else? Uh, so there's strategic uh, movement stuff. Um, there's strategic rail. Uh, actually, the, their strategic move is, is not too bad. Uh, strategic rail, they can do two units, six spaces. The sea lift, they can do one unit, six spaces. And their air lift, they can do one unit, six spaces. So that gets them to move around the Soviet Union pretty well. Like you can go from one side of the Soviet Union to the other with both the rail and the airlift, right? And then the sea lift, uh, you could, you know, like depending on if anybody's in the way, you might be able to get down here or, you know, across uh, the water somewhere there. Uh, as long as you've got a base that you can go to, right? Like it's not something that you would do on a combat move. And as far as they're here let, let's just move these out of the way so we can see the numbers because it's hard to count up the chips isn't it so they've got uh really good missile arsenal there so they got 15 cruise missiles four nuclear cruise missiles 
and three sub-launch ballistic missiles. So that's pretty good. Plus they also have six ICBMs that are on board already. And uh, they've got three um, ballistic missile submarines. And I believe they start with four drones. Three or four, I can't see from this side of the board. It's all the way over on the other side. So uh, they're, they're actually stacked up pretty well. The Russian Federation is, is pretty good. And you see this one up here, the nuclear torpedo. That's the technology that they can use. Uh, if you've seen some of the other videos that I made in this series, you know that uh, they've got the same first five uh, technologies as five of the other nations do, like most of them. Everybody but the Caliphate. So the hypersonic cruise missiles where they cost four instead of three, but they attack it at five and they have a, a target selection of one or two, right? And then the anti-ballistic missiles, so they can shoot down ballistic missiles on their own territories uh, when people are trying to attack them. They've got the improved drones, so they go four spaces instead of two. The next gen fighters, uh, they attack and defend at eight instead of six and they cost 14 instead of 12. Next generation main battle tank that uh, they attack and defend at eight and, and cost eight instead of six, six, and six. And then that nuclear torpedo. Now that's a pretty good weapon because it can't be stopped by anti-ballistic missiles. It has, it, it can go three spaces, but it, it has to go three spaces through the water and you have to use a, a submarine to do it. So let's just take a look over here. Look, you have to shoot it from one of these attack submarines, right? And you go through the water and you attack the land. Um, and, uh, and obviously it's a, um, a torpedo. So um, that's why it's stealth, right? Like that's why it, can, uh, it, it can't be stopped by the anti-ballistic missile systems. Um, and not only does it... Uh, um, uh, attack the land but it also takes out the the naval bases that are in the water um, in that sea zone there so like you could take out uh, I think all four of those naval bases there in that thing let me just take it let me just read what it says it says when the Russian faction gets this technology it gains a special nuclear weapon that can be used once per game this weapon must be fired from an attack sub and has a range of three zones. It cannot be intercepted by ABM defenses. It must be fired across sea zones, ending its move in a land zone. It has a damage modifier of plus two. All naval bases in the land zone that are adjacent to the last sea zone that the torpedo moved through have a damage marker placed on them. Okay, so it's just that, uh, that land zone. So like if they were to attack this one here with the torpedo, then it would damage both of these naval bases here, right? Plus it would do damage in the territory as well, uh, the regular nuclear damage that, you know, depending on what you roll. And uh, again, the ABM does not stop it. So pretty powerful thing, but it's only once per game that you can use that. But uh, they're, they're the only nation that has that, that ability. So uh, I believe that's everything to do with Russia that uh, is is unique so um that's it for this video so take care everyone general hand grenade out